Welcome to the channel. If you like horror related content, then please consider subscribing because that's pretty much all we do here. So in today's video, we're gonna take a closer look at one of the masks in my creepy collection. This is a silicone mask spotlight. So today's silicone mask spotlight is this nasty looking dude. Pretty cool, right? This is from The Basement Effects, and it is a mask called In the Mouth of Madness. And I have a whole bunch of masks. I'm gonna eventually show all of them in this way in a spotlight episode, but um, a subscriber asked me to do this one, uh, so I thought I would start here. It's from The Basement Effects. It's called In the Mouth of Madness, and the color variation on this one was called Deep One. So you can get it in like pale, you can get it in UV, but this one was uh, Deep One was the style of the paint job on it. So please keep in mind that I buy these masks for pretty specific reasons usually. Um, so this one, for example, um, I had an idea for a monster that I wanted to be in a movie that I was writing and I thought this would work perfectly. So I, I don't buy these masks just because they look cool and because I want them in the background of my videos, although that's a perk. Um, I buy them because I wanna use them for short film projects, maybe even a full length movie one of these days, one of these days. I don't need them to just look badass. I need them to actually perform well on video or on film. So there's a lot of different criteria that I have. I also collect some things just because I think they look cool, like a lot of latex masks that I don't really plan on doing anything with, um, but they look really neat in my collection. So if that is the case, then you could just take a look at it, take a look at the price and decide whether or not you want to buy it. But I have very specific criteria that I like to go by. So what is the price on this one? It is $750 plus keep in mind when you buy these things, they're shipping and handling and taxes. And if you want to put one of these head forms, they're around 45, 50 bucks, something like that. So all in, you're gonna be spending 850, maybe even 900 to $1,000. I just generically call this a $1,000 mask because it was somewhere up in the 900s, I think, for um, you know all the taxes and shipping and head form and everything. So it is a little bit expensive, but you can see by the crazy awesome job they did here that it's, it's definitely worth that especially if it ever does make it into a movie or a short film project of mine, um, then I think it would be worth it. So since I'm gonna be using these, hopefully in short films and in movies, I need it to be able to do a lot of things, more so than just look cool. I need it to be able to blend seamlessly to the actor. So I look at things specifically like the eyes. In this one, it doesn't have any eyes, so that's not a big problem, but where a mask fits around the eyes is a dead giveaway that it's a mask usually. So how does that look? How does it look with the mouth? Again. This one isn't much of a problem. You can barely see the mouth because it's behind all the tentacles. So there is no real way to tell that it's a human mouth in there. So something like this, it lacks really in movability because it's so thick and there's so much to it, but it hides the fact that there's an actor inside pretty well because you don't see mask holes around the eyes and around the mouth. So when we take a closer look at these masks, keep in mind that I am really looking for those types of things that make it, that make it more able for me to use it in an actual film, not just to look cool. So let's take a closer look at In the Mouth of Madness by The Basement Effects. All right, so this is under a lot of lighting. In a real film scenario, I probably wouldn't be using this much light, obviously, but I wanted you to be able to see the actual details of the mask. You can see that there is a lot of movement in the tentacles. Every time you move your head, the tentacles move, which is pretty neat, um, but you don't have a lot of emotion or the actor can't emote very well from underneath the mask. You can't see a lot of eye movement. Uh, you can't see a lot of mouth movement, although it would be pretty cool if you picked up the tentacles, you know, maybe hooked a little fishing string or a little green line to each one of those tentacles and then did a close up with the tentacles flared up in the air so you could actually see the teeth inside of the mouth. That might be a cool scene. But this one, you don't really have to worry too much about it blending around the eyes because you can't see the eyes. Just be careful you don't have too much light shining in the eye of the mask or you'll be able to see into the tiny holes and maybe even see the actor's eyes. And there's no real problem with the mouth. Um, dialogue, pretty tough with this one. Uh, so let's hear an example of me talking with this mask on. Dialogue, can you hear me? Really difficult to talk in this mask. I know that's a really bad microphone I'm using, but I just wanted to give some sort of idea as to what it would actually sound like if your actor tried to do some dialogue in this mask. Now, is it comfortable? Um, it is probably one of the heavier masks that I own. It's a lot of silicone material here. There's a lot of you know, the tentacles themselves are heavy. It's just a big overall mask. It's just a big mask, it's really heavy, so make sure you warn your actors that, you know, they need to take a break, they need to take the mask off once in a while, and they're probably going to be a sweaty mess 
after about an hour of wearing this mask because it is a lot, a lot of silicone on there. So, but overall, pretty neat looking. Now let's take a look at it with some more realistic lighting in a film scenario or in a short film or in a movie. You're not going to have a big softbox light right on the front of this thing. You're going to have some moodier lighting. So let's take a look at it with a bit more realistic horror light. And again, any chance of you seeing the eyes is completely gone because of the low light. And overall, it looks pretty neat on film. I also add some color correction and a little bit of film grain. I want my short films to feel kind of 80 style, so I add a lot of film grain and things that also kind of help to blend the mask into the actor's face. Pretty awesome, right? So if you are interested in this mask, I will leave a link in the description to the basement effects where I got it. And I will also leave some links down there to places that I often check online to find used masks, sometimes at pretty crazy discount prices. Um, but I'll leave that all in the description. Go check that out. And don't forget to like and comment and subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell icon and do all those things that help the channel grow, especially if you want to keep seeing content like this. So I'll see you in the next video.